I'd suggest is with your equipment, mark the mop bucket, mark the handle as a finish system. So someone accidentally doesn't use it for stripping, someone doesn't accidentally use it for degreasing a floor, those high pH products would attack finish. So keep this as a separate finish system. The handle itself is an alligator clip, we call it. And if you don't put it on right, you'll be kind of disappointed in the way it operates. If you take a look, it just slides right over that first lip there. This alligator also has the ability to have this white slider. I don't think you want to have it in lock position. You want to have it so you can do a figure eight back and forth. You're going to find it's much easier control. What Ron and I did was in the sink, ran it back and forth across the sink, get, get it wet, not saturated as you feel, and then wring it out and roll it up, and now we're ready to lay finish. Our first step is wet, wetting the wax applicator, the dial-out applicator. Then you put your finish into the pour can. The next step is laying the finish into the mop itself. Before I do that, I want to show, talk about some, some techniques. You never start pouring your finish up against the wall. You never start pouring your finish in a corner. You always start pouring your finish where you're going to be spreading it around. The only time you have to move a little quicker than normal is that first pass. So here's what I'm going to pour the finish now. And you know you have enough finish when it starts leaking out the bottom. Step back. And you're staying away from the wall, correct? Right, on the first coat, because we're putting multiple coats down, we're staying away from the wall. If you see I poured too much finish, you don't want to have that much finish. But it's easy enough to use the snowplow technique to move it over. Here's where we do the regular figure eight. I'm pulling farther from the left side because there's more finish, my left side, on this side, staying away from the wall for the first coat. It was fairly wet still. I brought it down to my edge. I use a landmark so I know where I'm working. It's very important after you have multiple coats on the floor. Now we're going to re-wet the mop. This time I'm going to pour less. Because I showed you how much you shouldn't have. And you pour until it leaks out again? Yep. Move back about a foot. And move forward. And fill in your horseshoe. So you made a horseshoe. And notice I don't go past my pour line that I brought up. It's much easier to swing this kind of mop than a heavy wax mop that you have outside the hallway here. And here's a technique at the door, which will be crowded, I'm going to show you folks. When you're all done, you have your finish out, we do what we call an airplane takeoff, where you lightly pick up so you don't need bubbles. So now that I've done an area, I want to keep a wet line. So I go back to the top, I'm overlapping to keep my wet line. I don't like to go all the way over. I'm not tall. I'd rather go and fit a shorter pass. It's just easier for me, for my shoulders, for my arms. So I'll finish that last separately. I just touch my wet line and I come back up. 
I don't want to swing all the way into here. So there's your horseshoe. Check where your wet line is. Keeping my line wet to my reference point. Outlining your horseshoe again. So you're filling it not where the finish was, you're finishing it where the finish isn't. Correct. Good. What do you guys think? Fast or? I think it is fast. Good. And it's an even coat. You get a nice yeah. even coat because you learn the technique. Yeah. Yeah. Finished out the room. We had just enough finish on the mop. I did a light airplane pickup, not immediately in front of the door, but just off to the side so that we would have no streaking. And then for in between coats, all I have to do is release the alligator clip, and now that's going to stay nice and moist, ready for the second coat. Rhonda, that's a good question, how we should keep this clean. As long as you keep it in an airtight bag between applications, even over a weekend, this is fine. It won't turn sour. When you're done using it for a period of time, what you want to do is rinse it out in cold water, no soap, okay. and so that there's no milky white coming off of the wax mop, and then you can just hang it to dry. Never put it in a dryer with a fabric softener. Okay. This should last for years if it's kept up. You never want the floor finish to dry on the wax mop because it gets crusty and then you can't do anything with it. Okay. So keeping it moist in the bag, maybe using a new bag with every day of working so in case the bag isn't the best. Mm -hmm. But definitely just keeping it moist, keeping it clean, and that's all you have to do. Okay.